And then with 16 and a half, I won my my first uh, men's tournament. With this, like a men's, like like senior yeah, tournament yeah, with senior. 16? Yeah. How was yeah. that feeling? It was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are the biggest stadiums? Is it biggest stadium is Arthur Ashe in uh, New York? Okay, I think it's twenty two thousand. Oh, so many! It's nice to play on it, but it's also you have a lot of pressure on you because the stands they just go up like this. Romanians often uh, have a lack of confidence due to the past. They are proud of their country, but they hide it. How was that for you, like being un playing under the Romanian flag? Uh, for me, I, I love Romania and. Uh, I don't. I didn't hide at all. I always uh, tried to to tell the positive part of Romania. That's why I decided to to come back and and to live here because I think right now Bucharest is one of the best places to to live. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I like it for sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. Who would you say when you were growing up were one of like your your biggest idols in tennis? Roger Federer. Mm. Mm. But how was it then when you to play with? Okay? Yeah, man. <laughs> Salut and welcome to the Romaniac Show episode 12. Yes, we have a two-time ATP finalist. He's beaten some of the greats in the game, Alexander Shrerev. He's also beaten Marin Cilic. He's somebody who just narrowly lost out to, to uh, Roger Federer. He is one of the best Romanian tennis players of all time, Marius Copil. Thank welcome, you. thank you very welcome, much. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we are, we are great uh, that you took the time to come around on the podcast. Um, for sure, for us, you are the first big guest. We have to say that honestly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for this for this young podcast, and uh, we are more than excited to talk with you, you about. Thank yeah. you guys for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. If anybody didn't know as well, he rides motorbikes. Yeah, which is super <laughs> <laughs> something that I thought yeah, was super super cool. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, Bucharest. Uh, yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. you have to t if you want to save time. Yeah. 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 But yeah. is it? I mean, I. I ride the bike everywhere. Okay. So, I mean, that's even less safe. I think Bicycle. it's less safe yeah. because you can't go fast if you have to. Yeah. But I guess it's a lot of fun to go with a, with a bike here. Yeah. No, it, I really enjoy it. And um, as I said, uh, you save a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it's also something that I like and uh, to have the, the time and the chance to, to use it every day for, to go to work and um, also to go to lunch why not mm -hmm. yeah i mean you cut the traffic yeah. yeah especially here in bucharest but you're not originally from bucharest are you so yeah my uh, my father is from oradea mm -hmm. and my mom she's from timishwara okay and they um, they lived in uh, arad because of uh, the sport the sport that they did mm -hmm. uh, my father did rugby and wrestling and my mom did handball and uh, that's where in in communist time that's where mm -hmm. they had to to play so they they stayed there, and uh, that's mm -hmm. where I got born. Yeah. Okay. So they also they were professional. Yes. Sports people. Yeah, yeah. You have the sport in gene, and you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Wow. And how come your mother played handball? I know it's uh, very famous in more than northern countries like Germany. Mm -hmm. we, we have a big. Also in in Romania, we I have uh, two Romanian and uh, uh, teams. Mm -hmm. One is Rapid uh, Bucharest, and one is. Uh, CSM Bucharest in mm -hmm. uh, in women's handball they mm -hmm. they are now in quarter final of Champions League. Wow! Yeah, if you if you want to go uh, Sunday, they play at three o'clock. If you want to see atmosphere, um, Rapid Bucharest is playing, and uh, I mean they have the best supporters. I, no way! I support the the football team of Rapid Bucharest, and mm -hmm. I mean we have the the nicest uh, uh, supporters. So, in your opinion. <laughs> or do they have it in, have in many people's opinion? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's gonna be really fun. So yeah. Mm. I, I mean, if you guys wanna, it yeah, sounds like cool. Handball. I yeah. mean, I don't know anything about handball, but I'd I'd love to go and watch yeah. a game. It's nice. I mean, yeah, I want to do something different. Mm. Yes, for sure. I've never I've never seen a handball game either. I watched always the World Cup because in Germany, Germans do watch that. But besides mm. that, I never saw it. Yeah, that is great. So, um, how come is it due to the training that you moved to Bucharest, and or when did you um, started moving? Yeah, so um, with ten, I moved to Germany from mm -hmm. from Arad uh, to to practice tennis, mm -hmm. um, and I lived there for eight or nine years. Um, 
and then from Germany I moved to the United States. I lived in uh, in Florida for three years, and then I decided to come back. And uh, I always wanted to come to Bucharest because since I was young and I was coming to play tournaments here and, and the national championship, I really liked and enjoyed uh, enjoyed Bucharest mm. as a city. And uh, I said, oh, one day I want to come here and move here. Mm-hmm. So when I came back from uh, from Florida. When 21 or 22, I, I decided to come here and uh, start practicing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, since since then, I'm here. Okay. But I mean, at 10 years old, moving to Germany, at such a young age, is such yeah. a huge step. Yeah. So I guess at this point, you already, you should, uh, you're not just moving there to start your tennis career, are you? No, I started with seven, uh, playing tennis and playing football also. Okay. Um, and... My biggest passion was football, but uh, my father didn't quite like it. Mm. Him as a rugby player said, "Yeah, it's football for girls. is yeah, <laughs> yeah. Girls. yeah." That's what he I said say, always. I, yeah, I start to say the same, you know, because I'm also <laughs> passionate about football. But when I watch what the what the pros do, it's not sportsmanship anymore. And I'm yeah. saying I would rather when I have sons, I would send them to play rugby. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's different, uh, and now they're just faking a lot. That's yes. what I don't like so yeah. much. But, um, I mean, besides that, football is great. I really yeah. like it and gets people connected so much. And, and yeah. I really enjoy it. Um, and, yeah, for three years I did tennis and uh, and football. And then uh, my father said, okay, decide for one sport. I mean, he didn't like uh, football. And I said, okay, I'm going <laughs> to go for tennis. But it was not actually my my um, dream to, to be a tennis player. But mm-hmm. then... Moving to Germany, starting to practice more and more, um, I got to, to like tennis more yeah. and more, and I started to enjoy it more. And then that's how um, uh, my life was from from ten years old to to seventeen. It was a lot of practice, mm-hmm. uh, staying in in Germany two months, then coming back to to Romania for one month to go to school, and um, doing this this trip a couple of times a year. Mm-hmm. So, so you were really moving alone? No, with, with my mom. With your mom, okay. Yeah, she was coming with me. And she, okay, she helped me. Yeah. And in that time, you only trained, so you didn't went to school in Germany. No, just uh, just training. Wow. Yeah. So it was already on a very high level then. Yeah, I did uh, tennis twice a day, and uh, I think fitness three times a week. With wow. that young age, yeah. That, how did they? How did you know that you were so good at that age? I didn't. <laughs> to be able to, I mean, to be able to go. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't. <laughs> you must have been really crazy. Did you go on what kind of scheme? Did you go there with? Did you, you didn't just move to Germany? Did you and then uh, no? Look for trainers? Um, so being from the west side of the country, we had a lot of uh, German people uh, yeah. living. You know, Sachsen and uh, Schwaben yeah. and all this um, type of uh, uh, people from different parts in in, in Germany. And uh, we had one tennis coach that uh, he was half German and uh, he was living in uh, Augsburg. Okay. okay. And uh, he said, man, come to come to Germany and I can I can um, teach you to play tennis. You have more uh, more opportunities there. Mm-hmm. And um, we'll find also a club. You can play some club matches there. Mm-hmm. You can start uh, getting to know kids more and you can enjoy it. Just give it a try. And yeah. my father was super happy with it. And um, that's how, how it started. Yeah. So you you played all the normal, was it like the normal youth or was there a special league then? around? It was age? under 12, under 14, under 16. I played uh, uh, for uh, first first year I played in, uh, in Augsburg mm-hmm. for a team. I don't remember the name of it anymore. Uh, but then when I moved uh, a year later to, to Munich, mm-hmm. I played for Ifitos. Maybe mm-hmm. no, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you heard about it. Uh, so it's a very old and prestigious club in, okay. in Munich. It's next to the Isar, and uh, I played there. We got to be uh, like regional champions under twelve, and wow. um, then I started to to participate also in, in Germany. They had uh, not the nationals; they had regionals. Okay. Yeah, first you had to play the regionals to qualify for the nationals, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I got to be second 
but because I didn't have a, a German passport, they didn't let me play the nationals. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah. they they took the guy who who finished third. Oh, nice. <laughs> How was it for you, like <laughs> mentally wise, moving to Germany? Was did you like it, like the lifestyle that you had um, over there compared? What I liked it was um, the quality of life. What I mean by it, it's everything is straightforward. You know. I mean, in order. In order, yeah. Everybody Structure. is on time, you know. But what I didn't like at all is it was so tough to to get to make friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you want to see somebody now, maybe you guys figured it out here in Romania since f- if you guys here since five years, if you want to see somebody, you just call and say, "Hey, man, let's meet up." Yeah. There, yes. I I had some some friends and we were like, "Okay, let's see each other today mm-hmm. or tomorrow." Mm-hmm. It's like, "No, man, let's." Let's schedule for uh, in two weeks Friday. Yeah, is it because of the, the busy schedule? Or? Yeah, uh, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, they're not very spontaneous. I'm I I'm I don't know if I could say I'm lucky, but it's kind of a lucky side of my German dad. He's very structured in work, mm-hmm. but he is so spontaneous and matched with my mom, who is not from Germany. I'm very happy that I have that, and that's what I also like coming to Romania. When my parents visited, they were like, my mom was like, I understand why you like it so much because this is so different to Germany and this is also where our roots, because we are from Algeria. Okay. So she said, it's this ease of life. You just do when you talk to exactly. people. I mean, it was the same, you know, we just message you. You're like, ah, why not? I will come around, you know? And this is something in Germany, It's they don't have this so exactly. much. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, okay. So... So that was kind of difficult then. Were you always excited to go back to Romania? Yeah, always. Yeah. Because um, actually when, when I grew up, I think it was kind of like the last moment before uh, electronics come in a lot, you know, and mm-hmm. we didn't have PCs or computers. We didn't have cell phones. So we were everybody outside in playing uh, on the playground, you know, or like mm-hmm. playing football, playing catch or Mm-hmm. I don't know hide and seek all yeah. this stuff. So we work like fifty or sixty kids every night, you know. So I mean, this I was missing a lot when I was mm-hmm. in Germany because I knew my my friends were playing and I yeah I'm just practicing <laughs> and then come at home and that uh, fear of missing out <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but uh, it it turned well for me so I can't yes. complain yeah yeah I Very guess well. as long yeah as long <laughs> when it works out is the it's the yeah. best when you sacrifice. Um, and you sacrifice in the right way, yeah, it will come back, and that's the best that that people can do for sure. No. When when did actually then? How did the path continue? So you played then, and how did the switch happen where people were like, okay, this guy is so quite good. So with twelve, thirteen people started to tell me I can play good, mm-hmm. um, and that I have a chance. Mm. Nobody was thinking me coming from Romania, a small city that. I can make it to top 100, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a dream of mine to, to become a top 100 uh, professional player, but I mean, it was just a, uh, just a dream. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, with 13, 14, I saw that I, I started to, to win a lot of matches in Germany and, and I was playing with the best uh, junior guys. Mm-hmm. And then um, going also to the States and saw some coaches there and um, I had some training camps when I was 14, 15 with the German coach. We went to, to the States. So that's how I, I knew that um, how my level is with some, uh, some guys from U.S. And uh, yeah, and then I started to, to be more confident. And then with 16 and a half, I won my, my first uh, men's tournament. And uh, I started to be ranked in uh, professionally ranked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, okay, with this, like a man's like like senior yeah, tournament yeah, senior. with sixteen. Yeah. How was yeah. that feeling? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was Where great. was that? Uh, it was in, actually in Arad. I no won. Way. Off, okay. Yeah, my first. Uh, it's it's called the future tournament. So we have three categories in ATP tournaments. You have futures, challengers, and ATP tours. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was a, a future tournament, and uh, that's w- what I wanted, and it was. Really, really uh, nice. Yeah. It was a great feeling, especially in your hometown. Yeah, did a lot of your like friends and, yeah. and people come out? I mean, it was some seatings for um, I don't know, like two hundred people, so it was packed. Mm. It was really nice. 
No way. And also the atmosphere was yeah. crazy then. For like, me, yeah. I mean, not a lot of people, but 200 was nice for yeah. me. Yeah. Nice. I can imagine. Yeah. The 200 people who are basically rooting for you. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the main yeah. thing as well. Yeah. How many people do fit in a in the big in the big like where are the biggest stadiums? Is it biggest stadium is Arthur Ashe in uh, New York? Okay, I think it's twenty two thousand. Oh, so many! Yeah, yeah. I did, oh. That's basically the new sta- the the other stairwell. Uh, the uh, stairwell I don't know stadium. how much yeah, they yeah. have. They have uh, twenty two. Yeah. Yeah, and that's huge. Yeah, but uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium is um, it's it's nice to play on it, but it's also you have a lot of pressure on you because the stands there just go up like this and it's so many people mm. but I mean yeah it's it's 22,000 there yeah who had you played there did you play someone um, I played doubles there with Kyrgios and um, we played against I don't remember who where we won you played with him yeah yeah yeah, he's mm. like the most yeah he's the funniest he's, character in tennis <laughs> he's a good guy I like yeah. him yeah he's I think he's really good for tennis yeah, mm. how how is his personality? Is he like off court the same? Super like nice. Yeah, very yeah, nice. Can very humble, and um, he helps a lot. And I mean, I I really like him. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, he's a f- he's a funny guy for sure. I wonder how doubles came about. Were you always a a singles player like growing up, or were you? Yeah, I. So for me to play doubles is n- not a big passion, and mm. um, to play doubles. I have to find a guy who I also like outside of the court because playing doubles, you have to spend time with him more and more. And it's kind of like having a, a friendship, you know. Mm-hmm. And Imagine you uh, have somebody you really hate. <laughs> just like, oh my God. This idiot, man. <laughs> <laughs> <Up again. laughs> I can't wait to wear the court. I just don't, don't want to have dinners with this guy. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. But um, yeah. I played... I. Played a couple of matches, a couple of tournaments with uh, with some guys that I really enjoyed with uh, our best doubles player uh, from Romania with Tekau, mm-hmm. Maria Tekau. I mean, it was really nice and mm-hmm. he was uh, one of the, the greatest doubles players in, in the world with 38 titles. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's really nice to, yeah. to play with him. I had the, the privilege to play with him. Um, and then I played with some some other guys from Romania, and uh, actually I won an ATP tournament uh, with a Romanian guy in Bucharest. No way. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. That, yeah. it, that has to be crazy. Yeah. yeah. We had the packed house in uh, in Arenele Benere. I don't know if you guys went because there is now I, they are closed. Uh, they don't want to open the stadium mm-hmm. anymore. But we had like four thousand five hundred people watching. Mm-hmm. It was really nice. And um, we actually won it uh, in super tiebreak. I think it was eighteen sixteen or sixteen fourteen something mm-hmm. like that. It wow. Was really close, and uh, yeah, the atmosphere was was nice. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, <laughs> have you ever played with somebody that you really didn't like? I had some matches. <laughs> 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 I, I should keep that for me. <laughs> yeah, better not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tennis, actually, I have to say, it's such a great sport. I played when I was younger, mm. like, I think for like four or five years, but I was really, really young, like five or something, mm-hmm. because my older sister played. Um, yeah, it's a, such a great sport. And you know what I really like about the sport? We talked before about the football. Um, I mean, we know, and a lot of people don't like it because of that, because it's like a luxury sport, because it's it so simple, but it's so expensive for yeah. Yeah. actually... When someone is horse riding, you get it. The horse is expensive. When someone is doing skiing, like it makes sense. And golf, mm-hmm. yeah. But with with uh, tennis, um, they keep they try to keep the clientele. Can you say that in English? Yeah. The clientele. kind of people, yeah. Um, but what is tennis to you, and how much has it given? What kind of impression do you have about it um, when it's about the people and? Yeah, the sports I- itself, when we talk about uh, the comparison to other sports. So, I mean, tennis helped me, first of all, to to manage uh, my money because from a young age, I I had employees. Mm-hmm. It, it's weird because you have a coach that you employ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you are paying him. And when you start winning money, then... 
you have also some pleasures and you want to buy some stuff, but then you actually, you know that you have to pay for travel expenses, then you have to pay hotels, then you have to pay um, the salary of your coach. And um, this kept me, you know, to be humble, to be uh, also f- focused on, on, on my work that I'm doing because I know that my coach has kids to feed mm. and I cannot... Uh, mess up and not make money yeah. because then I cannot pay him and what should I say listen we have to to stop because I cannot afford it anymore so it's tough um, I have to you know take care of some some other people also mm-hmm. so this is one uh, one thing I learned also it gave me the opportunity to meet really amazing people mm-hmm. across the the world and uh, one thing that I could I could have done better is to keep connections, you know, mm-hmm. in in this world, because I, I met some really interesting people and some some people that had, you know, high value. That yes, you can. You never know when that connection or you you need. You know, you yeah. yes. can. Yes, maybe you you need somebody in in Australia, and I know that person, or mm. yes. I know somebody that who can you know introduce you to somebody. So this is. Um, something that i started to do in the last years but mm. uh, i could have done it better you know from from, from the get-go yeah. yeah yeah so because because i guess that that is also for sports people especially that is your your future also because maybe you become a manager maybe you will manage uh, t- young talents in romania mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly if it's you have the connections you yeah. can you can say okay i, I can send, send you here. two years to florida i have yeah. a good exactly. good friend exactly yeah so this helps a lot and then um, also being in a, in an environment in a, in a good environment you know you, you visiting amazing countries and whenever you go to to a different country you always see some some nice parts of it and mm. you, as i said you get to know uh medium to high level uh, uh people who yeah. s- same with the influence not money wise mm-hmm. and um yeah yeah, it's always good to know yeah. to mm-hmm. know those kind of people. And all of us, I, to everyone listening, you should definitely do the same. Network and it's Network important. Yeah. the most important thing. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. Because I did, um, one mistake I did is I don't like the managers of uh, on the tennis tour. Mm-hmm. And I said, I don't want to have anything to, to do with, with managers. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, uh, that's why I never had so many sponsors. Mm-hmm. Because they had the connections, mm-hmm. but uh, I didn't, you know, let them help. Uh, let yeah. them help me somehow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like uh, their, their their character. You know. Yeah, mm. I I understand that. I understand. So that. I said I prefer maybe not to make more money, just to uh, yeah, just to not get involved with those yeah. kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I understand it. I understand it because we also. Um, we also now with the YouTube and the things we do, we could also go below an uh, agency, you know, and d- they message us daily. Can you do? Weird? But we also can tell, like, firstly, it feels you give a bit of your personality away. I guess from okay. that moment, you really have to do things. Mm. And on top, the people who have these kind of jobs, they are not easy to handle. So there you have to see what is now, what do I have to decide? Exactly. What, what's worth it more? Yes. Being in contact with these people who you don't necessarily like and, they may seem like they have a hold over you as well. Yeah. Uh, whereas you earn a little bit more money or is it okay for you to earn that less money, but not be in contact with these people that potentially could mess up your mental psyche, yeah. which is very important in, a, in, in playing professional sports as well. Yeah. This is kind of like doubles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> when, when did that for you, this time you said uh, handling money, when did that started? Were you really independently, had your amount laid out and you were like, okay, I will do this. I will spend this on this. What so with, uh, with 19 or 20, I decided that I don't want to have help from my, my parents anymore. Mm-hmm. And then with, yeah, with 19 or 20, I started to, to fund myself. So all the, the earnings that I had from, uh, from matches and tournaments and uh, playing league in Germany, I put everything into, into myself. Mm-hmm. By the yeah. time you're in Florida, exactly. Yeah, but did you? So you start earning money very early then. 
in this yeah, league? Yeah, with, with 16, 17. Uh, okay. But when not you? much because I, I still needed uh, the help from my parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then with 18, 19, I started to be around, uh, with no, actually 19, 20, I started to be around 250, 240. I started to play Grand Slam qualies, qualifications, and that's where you start to make more money. Yeah. And um, that's where I could start thinking about, you know, to be self self employed and actually pay for mm -hmm. almost everything yeah and how important are sponsors in this like kind of field because you know so many people have very huge sponsors yeah. um and you are saying that you didn't have that many yeah. throughout your career well, yeah i had don't have i mean just clothing wise i had uh sponsors uh rackets wise i had sponsors but never with money mm. and uh i had i think three or four sponsors that they were on i had patches on, uh, mm -hmm. on my yeah. uh, my shoulders um in my entire career so it was not much mm -hmm. um but i mean when i was playing uh, top 100 my my expenses monthly they were 18 to twenty thousand a month euros wow so I mean, oh. <laughs> it's uh, around <laughs> 220 thousand euros a year expenses yeah yeah, yeah. So I mean, every every sponsor helps. Even now, yeah, for sure. being at uh, three three eighty because mm -hmm. I just started um, again like a year ago. With, yeah. Because um, I stopped for a year, mm -hmm. and now my my expenses are know, like six seven grand, just tennis wise. I'm not talking about family and, mm. and the kid. So it's still a lot, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a lot. Yeah, and I can imagine. Also, I think the sponsors. I mean, they apl they apply a bit of pressure, but also they take pressure from you because exactly. mm. they elongate a bit your budget to a point where if you don't win for a certain time, it's okay, and yeah. that yeah. keeps your your head free. Like you play more freely exactly. than yeah. thinking, "Oh my god, I have to win the next three tournament. I have to reach exactly. those ranks to to actually exactly. mm. yeah be able to continue." And also travel different, you know, because sometimes oh. Look, you we find tickets that are probably like two, three hundred euros cheaper, and then you, you have one stop or two stops, you know, and yeah, it gets you more, more, yeah, you tired. Come, yeah, yeah, you are still traveling a lot, yeah. Like last week, you had been in Mexico, yeah. I, I was uh, two tournaments in Mexico, and I had to, I, I mean, actually, I was supposed to go three in Korea, mm -hmm. but uh, it was too much time, and I said. And I want to come home. I want to see the kid also, yeah. my wife. Yeah, you have a son, right? Yes, one, yeah. one kid, Arthur. Yeah, that's good. He's How three old years is old. He? Three, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ho yeah. Hopefully a football player. <laughs> <laughs> this one plays football. Then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it runs in the genes, the, the whole sportsman. Yeah. That would, that would be nice, yeah, to do sports, professional sports, something. Whatever yeah. he yeah. likes. Yeah. How is it like traveling a lot and then leaving your wife and your John behind um, not easy not easy i'm i'm lucky that she also understands me mm -hmm. uh, with with my uh, with my professional work and uh, with him um it starts to be tougher and tougher they grow so at that age they grow so quickly yeah, exactly. as well that's why i stopped uh, the first year uh, of his uh, life mm. i wanted to stop playing tennis just to to be with him to see that's him grow right. the first yeah. year yeah yeah, yeah. Because I, mean, I said it's it's something that it's more important that, than tennis. Mm. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's what I did. And uh, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And yeah. I was lucky that uh, we had this uh, lockdown. Mm -hmm. and, On that uh, as well. I could, uh, I could see him. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So in that time you were more in, how was it then? You were just in Romania? Yeah, or? just in Romania. Okay, but tournaments still happened or? Uh, for half a year, nothing. And then uh, they started to to have tournaments again. But me, I didn't I didn't participate. I was okay. just more at home. Yeah. How was it like to, to come back into the game after a year out? Not easy. Not easy because it's, it's tough with... Um, with the ranking points mm -hmm. because now I'm playing um, I had to play smaller tournaments and I'm playing qualifications of challengers mm. and I have to win so many matches to start earning uh, points yeah and um, you have to do well in a couple of challengers to mm. to be able to compete in in ATP tours mm. and then you have to do well again there to mm -hmm. to make your your ranking uh, good again to to be able to participate 
every week in in those tournaments and then when when you have the points and the chance to to play every week uh at the high level then my feeling is it's much easier to to remain in top 100 than to get to top 100 i think so okay as well. so so you think the way up there is much hard i because that yes. was would be my next question are those lower tournaments then easier yeah. like I mean, it's uh, it's a lot more games at the end of the day, isn't it? It's a lot more games, yeah. So look, you, uh, for example, to to win a challenger, mm-hmm. you make eighty points, um, but in a ATP event, you win two matches, you make ninety points. Mm-hmm. Mm. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> compared to <laughs> winning a tournament or winning two matches, it's uh, it's different. Okay, yeah, you, you can say the level is. It's higher, of course. But actually, from from forty to two hundred, the, the the level of um, of tennis is not that uh, much difference. Yeah, it's just more confidence and and taking the the right decision in the important points. Yeah. So basically, wow. everybody is is a tough game. Exactly. Yeah. 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 How has it been? How I mean, how many years have you been playing tennis now for? So I'm 32 now and started with seven. So yeah, 25. Five. 25, wow. And in your professional career, how have you seen tennis change? Has it changed a lot? Yeah, yeah, it's changed a lot. Um, it's getting, how should I say, the courts are getting slower. Mm. So you have more more rallies. There are more uh, balls in, in play. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's more physical. Okay. I would say uh, before you used to have faster courts, and um, the serve would help you much more than it helps. That's something you're known right. for as well. Yeah, like exactly. Your crazy serves. Yeah, but now I mean you have to play more from the baseline, and then it's more more equal. I would say. Mm-hmm. Mm. But why why was that done on purpose to have a more flow I think, in the yeah, game to to be more spectacular for yeah maybe like every know. sport <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, this is how I see it. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm wrong, but um, I don't know. I, I've spoken to to many players, and they they see the same thing. And uh, also, there is more tournaments now on clay, so on slower surfaces, and the hard courts. As I said, they they became much slower than it used to be. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's why the level is more equal now. Mm-hmm. And um, how is your day now as a as a professional tennis player in general? Yeah, give us because a, a day in a life. Yeah, like a bit of an insight yeah. because that's really <laughs> interesting for people who always just see the people like the end product. Yeah, the end product. But how is it like? How important is do you do you see the time with the family? How mm-hmm. how does that play out in a normal week? How much do you train like these things? So um, I wake up early. Mm-hmm. Let's say six thirty seven. Um, to spend some time with uh, with Arthur and uh, and my wife before he goes to kindergarten, so I'm dropping him at kindergarten mm-hmm. at eight, and then I'm going straight to practice from from nine to twelve, and, and then um, I have uh, another gym session. It's either uh, track and field mm-hmm. or uh, in the gym, and uh, after that I have lunch, and uh, after I'm I'm doing uh, some physiotherapy massage. Mm-hmm. or whatever if I have some pains and then uh, going back home um, seeing the family a bit and if we we have my my mother-in-law um, at home then I'm trying to also um, go with my wife to dinner mm-hmm. to, to so also we have some uh, alone time yeah and then when we, I come home around 9 30 <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm dead <laughs> yeah yeah, especially yeah. after training every single day. Yes, yes, exactly. I just take uh, one day off Sunday. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing this for how years on years and yeah. years. Yeah, exactly. That's ridiculous. Like yeah, you can't you can't take this break and that no. break. No, you can't. Now, since having a family, I'm I'm practicing less. Mm-hmm. Uh, before it used to be six to seven hours, but now <sighs> it's it's less. Yeah. I mean. When you compare it to work, other people work for longer, but it's like physical, physical, physical. physical. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh. Like six hours. What's going to happen when you retire then? In the future, oh. how is that going to be? For you? 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a lot of that's why a lot a lot of um a lot of professional sports people they end up still having the same kind of day to day. Yeah, same kind of schedule. Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy. But um I want to to keep in um stay to stay fit. Yeah. Um probably I would like to to go to the gym and put some some muscles on me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because uh playing tennis you're not allowed to have not allowed like it's not <laughs> good to have a lot of yeah. uh, extra kilos on you and um how much how much does a normal like tennis players what's the weight because you're all so tall you know you're the first professional player i was i'm so like i just saw like in real life and i was like you're so much yeah. taller because yeah. you're all tall i guess and and slim yeah. and i always thought you're all like my height I really thought yeah, that. So I'm <laughs> 192 and I, I weigh 88 kilos. Oh, okay. So That's my <laughs> weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I mean, I think the best is to be from 5 to 10 kilos less than your, your height mm-hmm. mm. for, for tennis. Yeah. Um, but Are there also small players? Yeah, we have some. We have Schwarzman, who is from Argentina. He's... Uh, he's small. 155. So no. <laughs> 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 no, no, he's a yes, the, the children <laughs> record. 170. <laughs> <laughs> 170, though, is, is, it is it shorter is than average. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for tennis, yeah. Now yeah. the the new guys, they are all so tall. I'm, I feel, you know, medium to, to small compared to, to them. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, we're babies running around on the court then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, how how when you played against Zverev, mm-hmm. yeah, did you guys knew each other before? Because I know him since he's very young, 14, yeah, I'm 15, guessing then, yeah. because he was traveling with his brother to some tournaments, mm-hmm. um, and I was hitting, uh, I was practicing with him a couple of times in in Australia, um, and I knew him since since then. And his brother came to me and he says like he's gonna be top five for sure. Like wow, you know, you're confident. I like it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it turned out to be to be true yeah. and to be right. And uh, I mean, he's a he's a great player. Mm. Very, I like his confidence mm-hmm. a lot. Also, his back and he doesn't miss, and he's tall guy, serving good. And um, yeah, but the the confidence uh, and the belief in yourself helps a lot. Yeah. Mm. How was that for you as a Romanian? Because it was one thing we realized um, on this whole mission uh, about um, yeah, showing the real face of Romania is that Romanians often uh, have a lack of confidence due to the past, like mm-hmm. being a country which was oftentimes through the communism on the back end in Europe. And uh, we can for sure tell that a lot of people, they're not, they are proud of their country, but they hide it. How was that for you, like being un- playing under r- the Romanian flag? Uh, for me, I, I love Romania, and uh, I don't, I didn't hide at all. I always uh, try to to tell the positive part of Romania, and uh, for me, I think there is more pluses than minuses mm. um, here, and I, I really enjoy it, and I that's why I decided to to come back and. And to live here because I think right now Bucharest is one of the best places to to live. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, I like it for sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, and um, but it's not easy because sometimes, look, um, what I don't like is we have so many people that uh, earn a lot of money and they don't help back. They don't help the community. Mm, yeah, um, it doesn't have to be me. Because I play tennis, it has. I mean, I would love to see um, young, young potential sportsmen, you know, getting help from from big companies that are are making a lot of money, or um, I don't know, helping a, a team or I don't know, a school or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to put money back in into into Romania and help. Actually, it's not many that they are doing. Yes, and um, I don't know why. Is it sometimes? Also, what I also feel is that in Romania, if somebody is doing well, you know, in mm-hmm. doesn't matter if it's sports or business or whatever, 
many uh, Romanians tend to kind of like envy or you know hate mm-hmm. on him but yeah. I, I, don't, i don't know why i i think i know i kind of know where it's coming from i can imagine because a country communism is everyone the same and i can guess that i mean it's in all of us not only com- former communist countries this this envy this yeah this hate towards yourself yeah when you don't have your life straight and then you see others succeeding so you 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 kind of envy them but i think in countries where they had all the same you were used to that and suddenly yeah. it's it's completely changing you can do whatever you want it's great but then the people don't do something and they see others doing something they're like and they have no excuse they see for example <laughs> exactly. yeah. the people who went with you to school see you and they know they have no excuse they had the same chances as you Exactly. And that is the point, I guess, where um, unfortunately there are still a lot of people. But I think it's not as w- there are worst countries when it's about that. I as think th- yeah. it can be. It, it and can as time be. goes on, that communist mindset will kind of uh, go. fade out. Yes. It will fade out. Oh. Um, but that, yeah, every people fall back on that popular crutch of it's not fair. Yeah. Because we have that mindset of everybody's meant to be the same. Yeah. Or because I'm still in my communist mindset, it's not fair that they have change their way of thinking yeah but it will, it will weed out with generations to come yeah i hope so yeah and they don't pass it to their kids and stuff like that so but yeah this is something that uh, i feel and i think you know they always see the tip of the iceberg they you never yeah. know what's behind, what's behind how it. much work it is yes mm. you know how many nights probably he was spending out or she was spending out uh, with friends and i was at, yeah at home or in the gym Or I was traveling, you yeah. know, and how many birthdays I didn't celebrate at yes. home when I was in a flight or in, on a court or, you know. Yeah, yeah Marius, you just got lucky, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not easy. And it's not yeah. that you are privileged because, I don't know, your family had some money to, to help you. Mm. Of course, this helps. But also, I mean, if you're willing to do something, I mean, everybody can uh, can do it. Doesn't yeah. have to, I'm not talking about tennis now. I'm talking about life in general. Life, yeah. Exactly. And also the people, when people think, that's something that I always think about when they say the parents. I'm always like, yeah, but somewhere it started. Yeah. So if you see other people having that, s- sacrifice your own life and it's start started. a legacy for your children then. Yeah, Because exactly. that's something, I mean, people also for us, you know, they see our stuff that we do. They also think like, uh, they're just rich people who came from abroad. I can tell you, we started this because we were both having crazy financial problems mm. and we were really looking in the future. We were like, how should we continue studying, you know? And yeah. um, so for us, it was also something where we had to do something and we made it in a country like Romania. We didn't, by then we didn't spoke the language. No. We, because we also started the agency. We have other people who want to study here. Okay. Medicine or dentistry. Because we got creative, because we were no, like, okay, not? we need we need some some money, yeah, and um, yeah. something that we know very yeah. well, we know how to do it, yeah, we know how to help the people here, yeah. yeah. So just a message maybe for the Romanians listening: you can really Romania is right now a country which is relatively far down in Europe, but it's on the rise, and right now is the chance to look back in ten years and be like, yeah, I'm so happy that that I saw that. There is a lot of opportunities here, mm. yeah, and right now, I mean. With the internet and with all the stuff you can do online, yes, I mean it can uh, you can you can start and invest in in yourself. Yes, that's the thing. It all starts with the mindset. It all starts up here first. Yeah, exactly. And then that could that could change the tide of your your family's name forever, really. And for me, because you said this as, uh, as a sacrifice, as if you do something that you you love. Or you have a goal, then it's not a sacrifice anymore. Yeah, this it's an is investment. How, how I see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, f- honestly, if right now, if I'm thinking and I'm looking back, 98 or 97 percent of the people in the whole world, they do jobs that they don't like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And me, I'm, I can say I'm privileged because I can do my own schedule. I travel. I'm outside. You know, I'm I'm doing sports and I'm earning yeah. money with that. And I'm doing what I love. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean but but to come there, you sacrifice a lot. That's what I mean. You you know, before, for yes. example, you went to Germany. How who who have no one told you? Yeah, you're gonna make it. Of course, you yeah. jumped into the into the. Yeah, I sacrif- I could say I could sacrifice. I sacrificed a um, couple of years of of yeah childhood. 
Yeah. But I mean, my my father told me something. He said there's three or four um, how to say stages in in your life. Mm-hmm. So in in one of them you will have to work mm-hmm. hard, and then it depends on you um, how you want to live life. So mm-hmm. it's either when you when you're young you study hard or you do sports professionally mm-hmm. and you start making money and you put on the side and then you have your um, middle life and end of the life uh, in a good financial um, yeah. mode and you can enjoy life or y- you enjoy your youth mm-hmm. and then you work in the middle and then start to enjoy <laughs> when you're old or you enjoy youth middle and then you work when you're old that's yeah. what my, my dad always told me as well but he didn't give me the choice he was like look when you're yeah. young you work as hard as possible so that you yeah. can have an easy life when you're older especially yeah. since and, and i think that's a natural way of how it's meant to go that's how our bodies are are made yes we're not made to work when we're older so of course when you're young and you have that physical ability do as much as possible yeah. yes that's also the time where you want to enjoy as much as possible and you may think that in the future the enjoyment won't be as as fun as it is now but yeah. it's always going to be the case as a child you're going to think ah oh, no when i'm 20 years old the fun won't be as good as now as it is now but then when you're 20 years old you look back and like well yeah. seven years old i was not having as much fun as i could have yeah. now exactly and it's also, always and also you the good thing is when you when you uh, do it in the first stage you can go crazy risk Yeah, uh, on your life because if something doesn't work out, you always have you can just work in the second stage, like yeah. in the middle of your life. You can say, okay, I will do this. You don't, don't have think. all the liabilities. Maybe the family, the children are not there yet as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I, I want to know what's your what's your thoughts on the the young tennis players at the moment, especially the Romanian ones. Um, in Romania, we have a tough time right now um, because we don't have anybody in my eyes that uh, can become a top 50 top 100 uh, player for mm-hmm. men or women both mm. both i'm talking from young age you know like 12 to to 20 i don't see any potential and look this guy's playing big wow i i can see him uh playing top 100 or she she can be top 100 i don't see that Isn't that what's her name? Um who? Does she represent Romania or is it does she represent She's half Romanian half young is Chinese. it young? Ah, yeah, you young. mean uh, you, uh, your Japanese. girl from uh, from Great Britain. From yeah, but is she representing Emma, Great Britain? Emma. Yeah. Ah, she's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, she's she's playing for uh, UK. For, for UK, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> her, dad, her dad is uh, is Romanian, yeah. Yeah. But at the moment, there's nobody that you can see that can really break that top 50 level. No, not really. Also, our uh, federation is not doing a great job and not supporting, not helping. And we don't have funds from, from the government. So so it's the it's money problem where... It always comes down to that. Money and... Uh, <laughs> the right people yeah. in charge. I mean, you need... Yeah, you need like... It's for everything. You need like people who are really not only motivated, but they have to be. there has to be this one person who's just like... Whereas this fire is somehow intelligent, who knows how things work, and yeah. this, that can decide everything. That can in every different field. This also yes, and also I don't see the the joy so much. Mm-hmm. Do you think But it's the time now? Whether you th- is I think yeah, because of social media, you know, they kind of live. They want to live a, a different life. Yeah, they, they don't live their their own life. Actually, yeah. and. They always look. Oh, look what the uh, the others have, and I don't have. Instead of just working, know, work and keep less time on on social media and 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 just work. And then when you you get there, you can post something, and then people will follow you. Yeah. Who would you say when you were growing up were wanted like your your biggest idols in tennis? So, I started uh, with Pete Sampras, as you, one guy from from USA. Um, and then I switched to Roger, to mm-hmm. Federer. Mm. Yeah, so these two um, were 
my idols when I when I grew up. When you were really young, but how was it then when you to played play him? Okay? Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> did you did you ever met him before? Uh, yes. Yeah. So you kind I of met him you a couple of times. So yeah, you have no. just small talk somewhere. Uh, yes, I actually played with him when I was um, seventeen. Wow. I played. Uh, I warmed him up, warmed him up okay. uh, for a match mm-hmm. in Halle in Germany. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's a tournament on grass. I don't know if you know it. Um, so my my coach back then uh, is also a ex tennis player from Romania, Andre Pavel. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, "Look, uh, I arranged for you to hit with with Roger." And I was like, <laughs> The night before, I was done. <laughs> he said, "No, let's go before before the hit. Let's go hit half an hour so you're ready." Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I went on the court alone. I was hitting half an hour. So you're uh, preparing to I prepare was pre- him exactly, <laughs> exactly. And um, I went on the court ten minutes before he arrived, and already full. With crowd, so there were like six hundred, seven hundred people watching just the warm up of him, <laughs> and I was on the court and everybody was talking. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, I started to shake a little bit, <laughs> and he comes in, and he's like, hey, I'm Roger. I'm like, okay, no, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we start playing, and um, when he warms up, actually, when you hit like one and a half or two hundred and two meters away from him, he doesn't move. So oh. I'm like, oh man, you know. So the oh. pressure got even bigger. Yeah. So I had to always play in the middle. So I was like, so afraid not to to shank because the people were watching and um, it was it, it was tough. <laughs> the yeah, beginning. I can imagine. For him, it was just you know another Casual, warm up. Yeah, yeah. work day. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but I mean, it was um, a great opportunity, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I. I I would say that it was better that it was not the first time uh, when we saw each other in the final. Mm. Just I had to the opportunity to see him once and play with him a little bit, and then I had the emotions a little bit gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. already like used to it. Yeah, and uh, which tournament was it? That when it was in his hometown in Basel. When you when you played him, yeah, in the final it was so eleven thousand people cheering only for him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's your yeah. idol as well. Right? Yeah, my, yeah, it was you were idol. also cheering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I have fourteen, fifteen people who are cheering for me. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. uh, that was fun. And maybe some random Romanians in Switzerland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. It was it was tough, I, but I was preparing the night before. Yeah. I was doing some visualizations and uh, I was already trying to to see myself on the court mm-hmm. and to to enter to see with the crowd and you know play some some pl- some points uh, um, through my mind mm-hmm. and actually when I when I went on court uh, I didn't feel any you know pressure or I was just enjoying every moment from mm-hmm. the from the warm up to to the end mm. yeah i can imagine yeah that's super fun yeah you it's, it's one of the greatest sportsmen yeah. ever yeah yeah no oh. he's he's great it's really nice yeah i mean all the results he had and the impact he had in in sports in general it's, mm-hmm. it's amazing yeah yeah i think he did a lot for ten. like there are always in every sport there are some personalities that let people actually watch the sport more. Like people who never ever mm. um, watched any game suddenly are like, who's this person everyone's talking about? And they're very charismatic. And yeah, mm. he's for sure one of those. Yeah. So there's two sportsmen that I would really like to to meet. One I, I met already and then one, I don't know if I would have the chance again. Uh, so with Mike Tyson, man, when I when I met him, I was shaking you so much. Him. You met him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did this I will, I will come you. out? How, how did you? How did you get the opportunity to meet him? Um, so he's one of his daughters. Sh- she's playing tennis, and um, I got invited by Patrick Moratoglu, who is a tennis coach. Mm. Uh, he was doing a, a preseason in uh, in Delray Beach, mm-hmm. Boca Raton, in Florida, and he invited me. He's like, "Man, come, uh, come, enjoy us, and 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 join us." And uh, I was like, "Okay." And uh, I saw him there. I was like, man. <laughs> no way. So he was just watching his he daughter. He was there with his daughter and uh, 
he was uh, also there for 10 days and uh, we had uh, dinners everybody together uh, each night and <laughs> and I said to myself one time I said listen you got to go and take pictures with with him yeah because normally I don't like to to go and uh, take pictures with yeah. the, with a person but with him I said listen I have to do it. Mm. Yeah. You can't let it slip. Like, hey, yeah. Matt, yes, nice yeah. to meet you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just like so chill. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. love the guy so much. Yeah, he's great. And he really uh, is. And the second would be Usain Bolt. I mean, for me, mm. uh, the guy, f- legend. Yeah. How, maybe, how is that for you in general? Because actually, you know, I once saw you. I, by then, didn't knew, like, in, in real life. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. never told me this. Yeah, I never told you this <laughs> because I want to keep it for here. Okay. So it was basically uh, a good friend of mine. He played also uh, a lot of tennis and also pro- like not in when he was older in professional leagues, but he was also on the way. So he was in uh, boarding school in Spain okay. to play, and he's also studying here. And uh, he's from Germany, but Romanian parents um, from Cluj, and uh, we went to play tennis in uh, the club in Herestreu. In Bedete, in a restaurant. Yeah, okay. and so basically when I came here, I was like, yeah, I want to play some tennis here and there because I played football always, but now with uh, with my studies and the stuff, I don't want, you know, it's very, uh, the risk is very high for injury. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, I maybe want to start playing tennis again. And uh, we went and then I, you were training, I guess. And he just said like, because I mean, he knows the whole tennis world. And he was like, "Hey, yo, that's a that's a top one hundred player." Like, okay. And he just yeah, and he said like, "Yeah, he's living here in Bucharest and stuff." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, cool." And then w- when this podcast was about, I was like, "This uh, this can only be you, isn't it?" Because no one else was no other Romanian here. How is it for you in in Romania? Do people recognize you? The fame. Some people, yeah. Um, some people recognize me, mm-hmm. but. I never get stopped. Like, can we take a picture and mm-hmm. stuff like that? Yeah. Maybe once a month, I would say. Yeah. And um, actually, I en- I enjoy it like this yes. because I can have a, <laughs> a normal life, normal life, yeah, private yeah. life, and um, and I always uh, I was a person that I'd, I didn't like to to go out uh, at night, you know, or yeah. to to be in, involved in a lot of, um, I don't know, uh, not parties, but uh, gatherings, like, yeah, the, yeah, you know. Like a m- big opening, amount of people. Exactly, crowded, or yeah. openings where in, you get invited to, mm-hmm. to the new restaurant or to yeah. some mm-hmm. a new launching or whatever. Mm-hmm. I I prefer to, to stay away. Yeah. Because I, I really love uh, a normal life. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. But I, I think in general, Romanians, they, I mean, it's good. They respect the people when they, like sports people or like, let's it's say famous fam- people, but they don't, they don't annoy them because also really famous people in Romania, they don't walk with security because it's not needed. Yeah. Firstly, it's super safe here. No. For the people who don't know this, Romania is super safe. Bucharest yeah. also, it's, I think, one of the safest capitals in Europe. Yeah, and the people are just normal. They just let you do your things. I and guess. I'll say also a lot. Tennis is not one of the biggest sports in in Romania in general either. I would say that it was for the last years. It I think it was the second biggest results wise. And I also think so. Really? Yeah. Also with yeah. Simona Halep. I mean, yeah, we had so look in the, in the past eight years we had Halep number one. We had eight girls in total in top hundred. Um, she won two, two or three Grand Slams. I'm not sure. Uh, then in men's, it was me top hundred, so I was fifty six. Then we had Horia, he was uh, number two in the world and winning also two or three Grand Slams. Uh, him winning uh, silver in the Olympics. Then we had another doubles player, Florin Merja. He was also top ten. They played the the ATP Masters at the end of the year against each other in the final. So, results wise, I think we were the second. Yeah, uh, I second think sport. I think that as well. For me, Romania is one of those countries <coughs> where tennis is very like. Also, a lot of people play it because yes, there are a lot of con- es- like especially because of Simona, and it started to be more yeah. in, 
uh, on TV. Mm. Uh, but football will stay number one for sure yeah. because it's in the whole world. It's yeah, like and this. in Europe especially. Yeah. And then the rest, results-wise, I mean, we have female handball um, and some some other sports like, um, I don't know, I call fans and some... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah fencing fencing, fencing yeah they yeah. Were, we had the gold medal but i mean this is not a, a yeah sport it's more for uh, everybody yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah i also so. think so yeah tennis is kind of but i think it's really the people who let people be in romania so if you are well known uh even even i think a lot of people will recognize you but they will just they will maybe say normally hello or just treat you yeah, as a normal it person it can be yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's be. great and also, tennis has this um, this bonus that you don't play for any clubs mm-hmm. yeah. in, in Romania. So you play for yourself and you represent in each match. Y- there is the Romanian flag next to your name, but also you represent Romania during uh, Davis Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, playing football, it's either club play or for a club that... Uh, maybe I support, but you don't support, or it's different, Mm. you know, then people can start shouting at you, something, you know, some (laughs) that they like you, some that they don't like you, because you play for a different team. So, that is true, I never thought about that. Yeah, in your own country, somebody who represents your country when it comes to World Cups or Euros or something, but then, Normal daily life, you're just like I hate. Yeah, it. <laughs> that's so great about about your sport. Then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I never, I never thought about it. But uh, yeah, it's all single sports mainly. Then, yeah. Mm-hmm. But even doubles, is, you don't represent yeah. any club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, is good. I guess what we want to know is like, what's your what's your aim now that you've come back to the sport? What's your aim for the next couple of years? So I'm I'm willing to get back to top hundred. This mm. is my my main priority. Um, to get there and use last couple of years of my my career in in the top hundred, and then see depends uh, how I will do money wise if mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna have a good uh, financial uh, status or not. Um, I have some ideas what I would like to do, mm-hmm. but not sure which one I'm mm-hmm. gonna be able mm-hmm. to um, to achieve or to fulfill. Mm-hmm. But I would like to to live here in Romania and um, probably help also the Romanian tennis community and I don't know do something if I can fix the the federation somehow and uh, you know start to to help the junior program and yeah and bring more more players up or try to to involve more. Uh, uh, investors or sponsors into the tennis. This is also something that I would like, but also I would like to do some some businesses mm-hmm. that um, require different amounts of money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. Which one I w- I'm gonna do? So, yeah, yeah, that is great, especially for for the for the for the junior players to next generation yeah, yeah to do something and uh, that will also fulfill you for sure because that's when tennis is your life yeah to help the young people i recently heard uh jordan peterson maybe mm-hmm. you know him. i know him yeah he he talked about it that um a lot of people i mean he's always fighting the thing that people don't like the the hierarchy and he's saying that a very fascinating thing is that a lot of people don't know people with a lot of money that are successful the most fulfilling thing for them where everyone is going to is teaching the younger people. That is the best feeling he said you can ever have. And um, I think that this is something, even when you will do some businesses, this will be something that will for sure help you also to mentally stay in a good balance yeah. um, after after the sport especially. This for sure. Yeah. He's coming to, to Bucharest, you know. For the for his tour, he's, ah, he's next Tuesday. His, yeah, next Tuesday. No, really? yeah. this Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, you guys going? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm coming then. If I can yeah. find tickets. Yeah, maybe. If so if we would have known earlier, we would have invited you. Yeah. Maybe we can see if there are still. So place. Tuesday, what time? Uh, in the evening, seven. Okay, I will look up now that you told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will, we can have yeah. a look. Maybe we can, we can go together. Why not? Yeah. Mm. Sure. 
yeah, I think this wraps up a good episode. Are yeah. we, also, we, we bought some tennis balls and okay. maybe you can sign them. We can For give sure. them. Yeah, why not? We still have to open them. What, what are the best brand of tennis balls? Oh. Okay, so um, most of the tournaments are played with Dunlop. Okay. This is like the most known uh, known brand and it's mostly played, I would say. Mm. So with Wilson, you play, um, it's more in the US. And you play US Open with uh, with Wilson balls. And in Australia, they have Australian, Wilson Australian Open balls. Okay. Is there a big difference? Do you can tell the difference? Could you blindly tell? Blindly? No, no. I cannot tell. It feels but like uh, a 1990. No, but when you, I mean, <laughs> when you play, <laughs> when you play, like you could, can, f- yes, you could, yeah. you tell the brand. Not the brand, but I can feel it's different, uh, different ball. Oh, okay. But also, it can be the brand also because Dunlop <laughs> balls are, are more um, easy to control, mm-hmm. and but there's also all court balls, then you have mm-hmm. clay court balls, then you have uh, no way uh, <laughs> high altitude balls. It's Really? And then you have for grass, it's a, it's a different ball. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they because look the same, but they're yeah, not the same. Yeah. Maybe we can because we also we planned like a sports uh, YouTube series where we uh, do different sports with uh, famous Romanian sports people. Okay, like for example, we have some footballers from the first league who are gonna film with us. A kickboxer, who else rugby player as rugby well. Rugby player. Mm-hmm. And maybe if you want, yeah. we can also. I mean, f- that's going to be so difficult because we are really like beginners to yeah. we, to set something up. But maybe we can see and film a short video if you want. We can do. I'm I'm open to to stuff. So let's get this, uh, oh <laughs> that ASMR <laughs> in there. Now smell them after you open. No, uh, after, after you open. Really? Yeah. I normally don't smell the balls, but <laughs> 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 doesn't sound good. Huh? <laughs> no. I want to have a smell. Of are they sprayed yeah. into? It's like. It's it's the same smell as the. Mm, it smells no, nice. It's not a bad <laughs> smell, huh? For you, it's mm. the best. How does it taste? <laughs> <laughs> Food review. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I get an adding. Yeah. There's one right there. Oh, these are super hard. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah, away! It's so fast, this, man. These balls here. They're really nice at the beginning, but as soon as you start playing with them, they get big, and uh, they get super heavy. And for me, it's tough on my my elbow and shoulder. Mm. This, so you always just one. use fresh. I don't. You mean this one exactly? This, exactly uh, this uh, model. Of this Wilson. Yeah, the tour one. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So which which one? So you have for every type done different ones also at home of them or what for like? I yeah, we buy different uh, different brands. But you buy like huge cartons full of hundreds, isn't it? Um, so the packages are 72 normally. Huge. Uh, Not three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it comes in like this, but you get just a big box. Mm. Wow. Then you have to open all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I mean, it takes a couple of minutes and it's okay. How many you want to sign? So all six of them? Yeah, please. Okay. Okay, guys. So... Um, yeah, we're gonna give them away. Yes. Um, Details of the giveaway will be some at some other point. But yeah, in the story. You have to be like uh, following us on Instagram to then, find out. Ah, uh, yeah. So we post. Yeah, when the podcast comes out, we have yeah. to put it up. Yeah, that is. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you also met like some other Romanian celebrities, like big time celebrities? In when you're traveling also so opera so much. So I don't know big time celebrities. Wait, who is there? Like Sebastian Stan? You know him? No, I didn't met him. So I could say Bromania, Matei Dima. He was, mm-hmm. you know, I'm probably you know him from. The, he's doing movies and uh, mm. so I know him. Um, Ooh, smiley, I met. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, who else? Horia Brenchu. Simona Halep playing tennis. <laughs> no, she, she's. <laughs> we grew up together. So really? Yeah, yeah. We're s- same generation. 
She's okay. born 91, I'm 90. You're 90, yeah. So, I mean... Wow, that's super sick. Yeah, yeah thank you very much matter. for signing them. You're welcome. Yeah. Also, I would like to, to say thank you to you guys because, I mean, you're putting Romania on the map in, in a positive way and talking so nicely of, of Romania. And I know this is my country and you guys are... I'm not, You're not from here. I hope you will stay here and enjoy the rest yes. of your life here mm. and uh, do positive things for, for Romania. And um, just, yeah, as a, as a Romanian, it's really, really nice to see you, you guys representing and um, showing showing Romania the good the good ways of, of Romania uh, to, to the world. So thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yes. Yeah, we, we try, we do our best. We're honored to hear that. Yeah. Really. Thanks. yeah. No, I see you guys traveling also in the Romania and visiting uh, different cities and, and seeing some stuff that, some things I didn't know, and I, I learned from from uh, TikTok that I saw with with you guys and uh, with some some others. So it's really nice. Yes, mm. yeah, we are, we are really glad to hear that because yeah. that's what is our mission, and we we are always glad when people actually say that it's working. Yeah, and no, people appreciate it's, it. It's nice. It's it's good good for uh, for our country. So I yes. really really saying thank you from for you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Huh? Okay, so for the people tuning in, you can win one of those. We are giving away some of them. We're also going to keep... <laughs> yeah, I want one myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give we one away. <laughs> five. No, I think three. We said... We'll give three away. For each one, we keep from now on when we have people on, we want to, to get their signature and... Um, we're going to keep one for a collection of the whole podcast. So mm -hmm. all the people, whoever will come in the future, we have some other people coming up, like some actors also in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the end, we give a huge package with all of them as yeah. well. So yeah, but this is going to be great. In Instagram, you will find the details how yeah. you can win this. Um, yeah, this was also um, yeah the next episode 12. Don't forget to give it a like if you're tuning in from the Romaniac show on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, you can also give a review in the audio apps, um, Spotify, Apple Music and Amazon Music from wherever you are tuning in. And this was us from the Romaniac show. Nice. It was so great having you. It was yeah. amazing. Looking forward for uh, the second edition. Yes. yes. <laughs> we can do that. And, for sure. And all of Marius's links will be down below as well. So if you want to follow him on social media, um, yes. see the kind of tournaments that he's going in as yeah. well. Yeah. It'll all be down there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. This was us from the Romanian show. Lada Vedere. And ciao. 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 ciao.